Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. I am Tam, Filipina, working and living here in Poland. In today's video, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of civil contract here in Poland. A special thanks to Christopher Magboo. He said this. He said, Ate, ano po ang maganda civil or employment contract? So for those who don't understand, he is actually asking which is better, civil contract or employment contract. Again, disclaimer, I am no specialist and all I share here in my vlogs are the product of my personal research and the product of my experience. That is why I'll be putting down in the description box all the reliable sources I think will help you if you're going to search about the civil and employment contract here in Poland. Actually guys, this topic is really broad but I'm gonna try my best to include those important parts. So in this video, we're going to discuss the following. Features of both types of contracts, the governing law, pros and cons, and of course, the most important part I think everyone has interest is the effect in the remuneration of both types of contracts. To be honest guys, actually I cannot decide which is better because it depends on the perspective of the employee or the worker whether what is important and what matters to them. What I will only share here are some facts and the experience I had. So maybe you can decide which is better for yourself. Generally, some people might want employment contract if they want security and they plan to live here in Poland for long term while others might want civil contract if they want to be more flexible in their remuneration and the time they're going to render while working. So without further ado, let's go to the topic. just like to ask a minute of your time to please like and subscribe and help me grow my channel so that we can also share more informative videos to other people. First one is the governing law. If your contract is under employment contract, then you will benefit from everything that is written in the labor law or the employment law in Poland. On the other hand, if your contract is under civil contract, then you will benefit from the civil code of Poland. So what does it mean? So civil contracts are bound by civil agreements between two parties that creates the transfer of rights and obligations. So in this case, under civil contract, it is the contract of work. So this means that you are not protected by the labor law, but you are protected by the civil agreements you have with your employer and civil code will prevail. So there are benefits that are enjoyed by the employment contract which might not be present under civil contract while on the other hand it is also possible that there are benefits that are enjoyed by uh, civil contracts that are not present in employment contract so for example in my case i am under civil contracts and it is clearly stipulated that i can benefit from the free accommodation food and transportation so those types of benefits should be written and stated in your contract however under employment contracts benefits are already written in the labor law that's why if you have agreement under civil contract you must fully read it carefully and know what are your benefits later on i will further discuss the benefits enjoyed by the employment contract 
Civil contracts are really common in Poland. It is usually used by employer who wants a worker to perform certain activities or specific work but does not want to hire them under the traditional contract of employment. The next one is technicality of the relationship. So under employment contract, there is an employer-employee relationship. So you can see that in the contract itself. While on the other hand, under civil contract, there is a principal and a contractor relationship. The technical terms for your employer is the principal. You as a worker or as an employee is technically termed as the contractor or service provider. Next one is the contract period. So under employment contract, there are three types of employment agreement in Poland. Number one is employment agreement under trial period. It is a maximum of three months. The next is employment agreement under indefinite period of time, meaning you don't know when it will end. Next one is an employment contract under definite period of time, so you will know when it will end. So for example, for one year or for two years or for three years. So it depends on the time that will be stated in the contract. While under civil contract, usually, as what I've seen, it usually has a term. So, for example, you have a contract from January 1, 2023 to January 1, 2024. The next one is working time. So, under employment contract, full times are considered those employees who are working 40 hours a week. So, usually, it is 8 hours a day and 5 days a week. However, working time including your overtime should not exceed to 48 hours per week. While on the other hand, civil contracts doesn't have a limitations for the time. So meaning, even if you work more than 48 hours a week, it is okay. That is why it is perceived to be more flexible than the employment contract. I am telling you this because some OFWs actually want to have a more flexible remuneration. That's why they're working a lot. I know it's not healthy, but I've known people who are working 300 hours a month. You are a person that wants to work a lot and earn more money, then maybe you will like flexibility of civil contract. Again, guys, I know it's not healthy, but it happens. Under employment contract, your salary if you're full-time are more considered to be fixed, especially if you're going to work 40 hours a week. Other benefits under employment contract are the following. Holiday, sick leave, annual vacation leave, maternity, paternity leave, night shift, Pay and overtime pay so if you did not watch my previous blog regarding how to compute your overtime pay here in Poland please watch it I will be putting down in the description box the link so please if you're interested kindly watch it there are more benefits that I might not be able to mention here so if you know some please comment it down below so I would also know next is overtime your employment contract there is 50% and 100% additional to the remuneration if you want the details of the computation please check my previous blog regarding this one if you're under employment contract you can actually choose between a free time or have it as remuneration so you can have one hour of free time 1.5 hour of free time or two hours of free time so actually you have choices in exchange for the overtime you rendered there is actually maximum of 150 hours per year so meaning for the whole year 12 months your overtime should not exceed 150 hours under civil contract, there is actually no additional 50% or 100% in your remuneration, meaning one is to one. Number of hours you work multiplied to your rate per hour, that will be your gross remuneration. However, you don't have the limit. So unlike employment contract, you have 150 hours of limit. If you want a detailed computation, actually I already made a video regarding this one, so please check that out if you're interested. The next one is salary. So if you're under employment contract, your salary is fixed. What is written in the contract is what you will get. But of course, 
if you're going to work full time, meaning 40 hours a week. So 8 hours a day, 5 days a week and get your full time salary. For example, your gross salary that is stated in the contract for full time work is 4,500, let's say. So on February, there are only 20 days. You're going to work 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, then you will get your full salary for the month of February of 4,500 gross. While come this month of June, so there are 22 days in the month. Even if you render two more days, because there are 22 days, still your gross salary will still be 4,500. It's more fixed when you're under employment contract. The civil contract, as I've said, it is more flexible because if you work 20 days for the month of February, you'll get 20 days worth of salary. But if you're going to work 22 days for the month of June, then you will get 22 days worth of salary for the month of June. So actually, there's more flexibility. So the more hours you work are actually better for um, civil contract. The higher the salary you will get. Next one is termination. Termination under employment contract should be under labor law. So under labor law, there are different types of modes of termination of the contract. The first one is by mutual agreement. The second is regular termination with notice. The third one is disciplinary termination without notice. Fourth one is upon expiry of the employment contract. So for termination, there are actually notice periods. So th this depends on the seniority of the employee. For those who work less than six months in the company, you can have notice period for two weeks. For those employees who work more than six months in the company, they should have one month notice. Those employees who work more than three years in the company, they should have three months notice. While under civil contract, termination should be agreed between the parties. Termination under civil contracts can be done, I think, even a day. So usually it is a week, but still it can be done within a day just by writing by one party that they want to terminate the contract. So generally, it should be stipulated in the contract the way how the contract will be terminated. Additional information, the job search leave. So if your employer terminate you, you can actually take leave to find or to look for another job. If you have two weeks or one month notice, then you can have two days of leave. If you have three months of notice, then you can have three working days of leave. Additional information, if you're under employment contract, you are protected against termination if you are employee in your pre-retirement protection period. These are employees who are reaching four years from their retirement. So the next one is if you are a female employee during pregnancy or under maternity leave. The third one is if you are a member of your company's trade union. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and please comment down in the description box what are your thoughts and your opinions regarding this video. If you find this informative, please kindly help me grow my channel by sharing this to some other people that might need this. Also, if you have other questions regarding Poland, please consider putting it down below so I can answer this in another form of video just like this one. Um, Thank you and bye-bye! Ayan guys, tignan nyo, ginabi na po tayo sa labas. Ayan yung view ko.